And the biggest thing I want to mention that really burns these two-year degree techs, we make the exact same amount of money. But guess who has zero student loans to pay back? For the sake of protecting myself legally, I want to make sure everyone knows that this video is solely my opinion. But if you want to know the facts, by all means, go and do your own research. Look up things I'm talking about and make your own informed decision. Hey, sterile processing and surgical tech professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. Today's video is gonna tackle a contentious topic that makes certain people show their ugly side. Not only am I going to jump into the difference between the two titles, but I'm also going to share my opinion on why it doesn't f matter. Sorry to be so forward, but this argument gives me a headache sometimes. I made a video recently discussing training for surgical technician in which I used the term technician and technologist interchangeably, and a couple people lost their minds flipping over it. This is one of those areas where people don't debate. They just criticize and try to cut you down, and it always comes from only one side. I'm just saying. But before we get there, what are the historical differences between the technician and the technologist? So what came first, the technician or the technologist? Ding, 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 it was the surgical technician. As with many things in healthcare, surgical techs were born out of conflict. In World War I and World War II, there was a massive shortage in medically trained personnel who assisted in the surgery areas. So medical corps men and women were taught basic medical and surgical skills to help with the overwhelming amount of surgeries on the battlefield. There simply was not enough nurses to assist in surgery and prepare surgical equipment assisting surgeons. After the world wars, the civilian sector needed trained medical professionals as populations and technology grew and all these medical corps men and women needed jobs so they easily transitioned into the civilian medical sector as the new job position entitled surgical technician. Over the 1950s and 60s, surgical techs became in high demand and a lot of facilities were providing on-the-job training since there wasn't any formal established system in place. It wasn't until 1969 when the Association for Operating Room Nurses decided to formalize a training and credentialing process in order to meet the demand of education and knowledge needed for these positions. Around the same time, the term surgical technician began to shift to surgical technologist as everyone started seeing how complex a surgical tech role really was. In the 1970s, a certifying agency was born, originally named the Liaison Council on Certification for the Surgical Technologist, LCC-ST, and was later renamed to its current name of NBSTSA, which is the National Board of Surgical Technology and Surgical Assisting. Now, I have my own opinions about the NBSTSA as well as the Professional Association AST, which I feel like are in cahoots creating this monopoly through state legislation, but we'll talk more about that later. Now, all you surgical technologists out there watching this video right now, listen to this next part carefully. After the NBSTSA was established and already performing certification exams for surgical technologists, then accredited programs for surgical technology started to develop within colleges and universities and technical schools. We were all referred to as surgical technologists before formal education even existed. Don't forget that. So the problem nowadays lies in politics. I'm going to jump on my soapbox for a minute, which will explain my rage behind this whole topic and argument. Is a person who got an associate's degree in surgical technology better than someone who earned a diploma of surgical technology through a trade school? People who distinguish these names separately would say a definitive yes but I have worked with many CSTs, Certified Surgical Technologists, which is the certification you can only get from an associate's level training program. And I gotta tell you, there are rock stars and there are duds on both sides. Unfortunately, you're playing with a whole lot of schools over a large geographical area, 
with tons of different types of instructors and curriculum. Sorry, but nothing is the same and easily measured as equal. Surgical technologists are not better than surgical technicians if you want to distinguish by using those separately. But here's the politics even further. Why this has become such an issue is because of money-hungry organizations like the AST, the Association for Surgical Technologists. The AST is not a certifying agency, they are an association just like AORN and others. And with any association, they want to be on the top and cutthroat everyone else because they don't like the idea of other associations competing against them. This is known in America as a monopoly. And with any other association, they want to be top dog and cut everyone else, proving that they're the top and best association for that specific job. This happens a lot with associations. And if you think about it, in the commercial market, if a company runs the entire area of that business and controls everything, what does that violate? That's called the antitrust laws and it's called a monopoly. So why is it okay for a professional association to do it under the guise of healthcare? What AST has done is they have lobbied state governments and even the federal government trying to make it so only associate level certified surgical techs can work. But not just that, they are specifically lobbying for the NBSTSA certification as the sole only accepted surgical tech certification. Now you can argue this whole thing two ways. The four argument says having one organization keeps everything in line in one single standard. The opposing argument says a single company can easily be blindsided and has no healthy competition to evolve and grow. There's no motivation factor. Not to mention they can now set the pricing on what everyone has to pay. And how much is it to take the NBSTA certification? $290. The NCCT is less at $199, and the NRST through AAH is only $130. Much more affordable, but not to AST's liking. So NBSTSA and AST aren't even monopolized yet, and their cost is by far the highest. Just wait until they own the monopoly. Good luck. But the good news is that if your state has not created legislation yet, you can be grandfathered in if you get your education done and start working now. Even if they pass something, it takes time to go into effect. But the good news is this, even in some states where they were successful to push their agenda through legislation for requiring education and certification, they weren't able to win the ultimate goal of monopoly. If you look at like Texas, for instance, they included the NCCT plus room for the department to approve more. Texas pushed back and said no to their unfair requests of being the sole and only provider. So all in all, do techs who got an associate's level degree own the title surgical technologist? Fuck no. So stop the bullshit. Like with any college, just because your education took longer, it doesn't mean they didn't add a whole lot of fluff in order to make extra money. And believe me, most of them did. Just like if you went for a mathematics degree and end up paying for classes like philosophy and English writing. And the biggest thing I want to mention that really burns these two-year degree techs is that we make the exact same amount of money. They don't make a dime more than us because of the type of training they went to. But guess who has zero student loans to pay back? And my absolute last thing I will say about the AST is on their website, they proudly promote their military friendly and recognize the military training for surgical technology. Well, guess what? The military program is only 21 weeks long. That's only five months. And a lot of that training is in sterile processing portion of the program. So we military techs don't have anywhere close to a two year degree of training. So for AST to have this on their website feels like a conceited handout to military folks. And to that I say, fuck you AST. Military trained surgical technologists are some of the best techs you'll ever meet. No associate degree required. And same for all these other programs like Preppy and getting certifications through NCCT and through AAH. There are a lot of fantastic techs coming out of these programs. Man, 
I'm worked up right now. I know this video had a lot of info and quite a bit of my opinions, but I hope it answered questions for you and gave you a fresh perspective on the entire argument of technicians versus technologists and how meaningless it really is. Any topics or videos you wanna see, don't hesitate to leave those in the comments down below. If you liked the video, consider subscribing and giving the video a like. I love you guys and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.